Hello everyone, it's Carrie, and today's video is the third in my Working Doll Artist series, where I share some of my experience in being a full-time doll artist. This series is intended for artists who are interested in growing their doll art hobby into a career, but may also offer a new perspective to seasoned doll artists and all types of artists in general. Check out my Working Doll Artist playlist for more videos in the series, including how to find your doll art style and 10 tips to being a full-time doll artist. So the doll I'm working on today is Mary Ann, and she's part of my Laboratory Escape collection that I released a few months ago. At the time I'm recording this video, she's still available in my Etsy shop. The link is in the description box below. So you may also want to check out the video tour of the collection, and I'll put that in the iCard. Today's topic for the Working Doll Artist series is based on some of your questions and comments in my previous video where I noticed that... So if you're a new artist trying to determine how to price your dolls or have been pricing your dolls and they aren't selling, or maybe you're worried your prices are too high or too low, I hope sharing some of my experience and tips may help. Pricing doll art is super challenging. We want to set a price that's not only fair and a value to the customer, but also fair to the work that we put into it. Also, custom dolls are valuable because they can't be reproduced. For example, with other types of art, the artist can continue to profit from an individual painting or drawing by making art prints of it to sell. Even with sculptures, the artist can make casts of the original to resell. But with the doll art, we can't do that, and once it's sold, it's gone. It's literally one of a kind. So setting your work at a price you're comfortable with is very important, especially if you're trying to be a full-time at this career. I often get asked by beginner artists for help pricing their dolls. Before we get started, I would never tell someone what I think they should charge. Pricing artwork is very personal to the artist, and no one but the artist themselves truly know what went into the work. But what I can share with you are the things I consider when I price my doll art and how I put it together into a price. I'll start with my basic pricing method and then explain a bit about how I come to the number. Then I'll talk a little bit about raising prices. So first I feel it's important to have a logical, documented methodology to pricing artwork to ensure you're being consistent with your prices and fair to the customers and fair to yourself. Many artists, doll artists or otherwise, use a variety of methods to price their work. What I'm sharing with you is the method that I created for myself. So what I use is the formula of wage times hours plus expenses equal price. So that's wage times hours plus expenses equal price. So for the wage, basically I give myself an hourly wage as if I have a regular job. So if you wanted to do this, you would just go by what you think is fair based on your experience and skill level. So for example, as a new doll artist, you may say, I want to make a little over what minimum wage is, which we'll say is about eight bucks. Then you can increase that over time as you improve and gain experience. Then track the time it takes to complete the doll to get your hours and then calculate the cost of the products used to get the expenses. So that's wage times hours plus expenses equals the price of the doll. Now, most types of artists, like contemporary artists, for example, painters, sculptures, etc., tend to add overhead as well, which is things like utilities and rent on your workspace and things like that. Technically, you're supposed to add that, I don't yet, but it's probably something that should be considered. It's just something to keep in mind. Now for pricing, if we're talking about a commission, I'll obviously need to know the price of the doll ahead of time, and I do have a method for that, so let me know if you'd like me to cover how I handle commissions in a future video. I do cover that in some detail in my pricing learning module for patrons. If you're a supporter over on Patreon, the learning module and a pricing worksheet template is available in the reward library. So let's talk about considerations when determining your price. I recommend developing a worksheet and some sort of app or timer to track your time as you're working. This will help because you don't want to include time that you're taking a break or daydreaming like I tend to do. <laughs> So things I consider in the price are the following. 
Number one, base doll cost. Make sure to look up the value of the doll that you're using as a base so you don't end up selling your artwork for less than the actual base doll you use is worth. As we know, many of the dolls we're using are discontinued and valuable on their own, so depending on the base doll you're using, you may have to increase your price. Number two, face-up work. I'll typically charge based on the time it takes to paint according to the wage that I've given myself. Number three, I'll add eyelashes. So if I add eyelashes, I include the cost of those lashes. Like if I purchase BJD eyelashes, then however much I paid for those, I include. For hair rooting, number four, hair rooting. <laughs> when rooting the hair, I include the cost of the hair I purchase. So if I use yarn, the cost may be less than if I were to purchase alpaca or high quality synthetic. So if you have to buy specialty hair, it, it may take some time to search for what you need. So I consider that as time, to work, time worked and charge my hourly wage depending on how much time I have to take searching. So if I've taken a lot of time of the, out of a day searching for the products that I need for a doll, I may consider using that towards the price. Hairstyle. For a long time I was charging for only the reroute and didn't even consider the fact that I sometimes spend an hour or more styling the hair. That's why it's so important to itemize and calculate how much time you're spending on all of the work. For example, if you spend 40 hours on a doll and only charge 120 bucks, that means you're making $120 a week. Actually quite a bit less after things like supplies, listings, listing fees, shipping, taxes are all considered. So make sure you're being fair to yourself and remember this is actually a job you should be getting paid for. Number six, setting a timer and charging according to your wage per hour will help with costume pricing. Don't forget to charge for all of the supplies you use, including the shoes. It can be difficult to find the right shoes to go with a costume, so make sure you're charging for them as a supply. There are also occasions when I have to shop for fabrics, and that is time that I need to include in the price within reason, of course. Once for a commission, I spent an entire day going to several fabric stores searching for a very specific fabric. That's time I could have been using to finish the doll, so that time needs to be included in the price. So all of this may sound like a lot to charge and may seem unreasonable to some, but if we don't charge our costs and the time that we use, then we'll be losing money and never be able to make a living with this craft. I do my best to be fair in what I include and try to work as efficiently as possible to try to keep my prices down the best that I can. We want to be as ethical as possible when pricing. I thought it was worth talking a little bit about raising prices. So it's necessary, it's a necessary step in an artist's career to increase your prices as you improve or as the prices of the products you use increase. So I don't frequently raise my prices though. I've been doing this for about eight years and I've only raised my wage about three times. And that's when I felt that I had significantly leveled up my craft. Other than that, I've only made slight adjustments to certain things due to the increase of the price of the products or the base doll I use. So if you constantly increase and decrease your prices, you may lose customer trust. So I recommend that you try to be as consistent as possible and also be confident in yourself and your work. You will probably know when it's time to up your prices. Before we go, I have to give a little of the bitter truth. I don't know of any doll artist that truly sets a price that gives them back what they put into the doll. Even though my doll dolls are on the high end of prices, when the supply costs and time I put into them is considered, my income is still very low. The saving grace is that I love what I do. So the truth is you may come up with a price using this method that may be too high to start with for your skill level, but rather than going lower and lower with your prices, here's what I recommend. And look, I know it can be scary and uncomfortable to ask for higher prices for your work. I still stress out about it, but be confident and list the price that you're comfortable with and you feel is fair. Not an unreasonably high price you want to see if your doll will sell for, but the actual reasonable fair price that you came up with using either the wage formula that I talked about or a similar method that you've developed. Then let it sit on sale while you work on your next doll. Focus on making that next one even better 
then list that one as well losing, using the same method. Then keep going, keep working, keep improving. Don't be discouraged if the others haven't sold. They will sell eventually and you'll be getting better and better along the way. The customers will start to notice your work and soon they won't be able to be live without one of your beautiful creations. Just keep making dolls and striving to improve with each one and be confident. So I hope you found all of this helpful. If this method doesn't appeal to you, I still recommend you put together something to calculate your pricing. While we want to offer the best price possible to our customers, we also want to be fair to ourselves. A lot of work, time, skill, and imagination goes into each piece, and we shouldn't underestimate the value of our art. I'm so thankful to my wonderful customers who value what goes into my work. If you have any questions about this video, please let me know in the comments. Also, let me know what you think about what I talked about. Do you have a method to price your dolls and what works for you? I'd love to hear about it. So thanks so much for watching, you guys. Good luck and have a great day. Talk to you soon. Bye.